going to give you a, a quick demonstration on um, making a small landscape with building in it. Uh, I wanted to go through the stages of developing the painting right from the original canvas. Now I'm using canvas boards just because they're portable and easy to, to work with. Of looking at the original uh, artwork from the site and the photograph and then dividing it into a composition and um, and then working out where where your eye level is in that composition and what perspective is going to um, follow from that from your your eye level, eye level. and and the, the roof line of the building and the floor of the building should continue out to those vanishing points for it to look correct. That's the main photograph that I took of the site itself. Mm. And, and then I've reduced that down to a square format. Simple format to work on because you can divide the square into two rectangles being the, the ground and the sky. And um, you can get quite a harmonious composition without too many complications. And so therefore the perspective, um, the perspective of the building is determined by you know, where you're standing when, when you're looking at the view. So if you're higher than the building, then the perspective has to go up, upwards. If, if the building is higher than, what, than your position, the perspective is going to go downwards towards the eye line because um, that's the the level of your viewpoint. When you're actually transferring the drawing from here to here, it's much easier to draw on a gridded, um, a gridded format. Do a very, very simple diagonal grid by finding the centre point of each side and drawing a line, uh, drawing the, the square lines, and then the, the diagonal lines from corner to corner. This is a blank canvas board. Um, normally what I would do is put down a ground layer. I, I use an acrylic wipe because it dries fast and um, it gives you a, a sort of a, a hard layer to work on and it stops the canvas from soaking up all the first layer of the, of the paint. And um, I add this uh, whiting which is like a chalk uh, made into a powder and that's traditional technique from um, the Renaissance painters. And you mix that into a, into a kind of a plaster. It's optional as to whether you, you colour that, but you can colour it with, um, with a ground. This one's good for landscapes that are sort of winter landscapes. Then we do what, what they call knife priming. You know, with a palette knife, you, you actually prime the canvas and, and, and you, you need to um, work it into the canvas so that you've still got some of the tooth of the canvas left because it's, it's nice to have that... Um, that look. Yeah, the canvas look. You know, charcoal or something like that to draw lightly, lightly draw up a grid on this surface. I'm actually using a sepia a sepia charcoal. Look, the only measurements that you have to take are you get the halfway point cross grid from, from corner to corner of each square. So what I've got here is I've got the eye line and the horizon line drawn in. And the first thing we want to do is is rough in uh, the position of the of the object. And and we know that the centre of this work um, is at the base of about the centre of the nearest wall, which is here. That's the centre there. And, and the nearest corner of the building, only just the nearest corner, is, is about halfway across this first, sorry no, it's more than, it's about two thirds of the way across this first square. And so what we do there, you can actually draw this 
this line right through and um, and everything else should start to recede from from that point back to the horizon so this is the base of the building you So the other edge of the other, the furthest edge of the building is somewhere in, in this square here, probably about <coughs> two thirds the way across again. So that's that's the roof. So anyway, this is this is the inside of the building here, and um, that's the front corner, the roof, and okay. So that's the, the the main object in the in the picture. And then we've already established the horizon being sort of about here. So all that is the background behind the building. And we've, we've got the, this dam at the front. And that's kind of creating that interest between the blue of the dam and the roof of the shed and the sky, sort of connecting those three um, blue shapes. I could, I could develop that drawing a little bit further, but I've got one here that is developed. <laughs> This is a drawing that's pretty much the tonal format that the picture is going to have. That's the raw umber there, and that's the burnt umber, which is you know, much more like um, Central Australia. And, and burnt sienna is only a, a little bit more reddish than, than burnt umber, and oh, yeah, burnt umber. And this is the raw um, sienna, which is very useful for. Um, crop fields and that's another example of colouring for skies and gradation of the, the blue into a horizon type of a tone of the blue. But I like to start with a combination of a raw umber, raw umber which is this brownie coloured and a little bit of white you just need a little bit of turps to start with. The other thing that we need is, is the medium, which you can make yourself out of, just need a little jar like this. And, um, and you need some stand oil. Um, this, this makes a, a fast drying medium. The proportions are one third stand oil, two thirds turps. The key to this part of the, the work is that you start off with a, a lean mix, that means more turps and less oil, till you get a ground layer down, you know. And you can see that the drawing is still coming through, till you've got pretty much um, a structure of the whole work in paint, you know. You can add little bits of white, or what you can do is you can take some white and, and tint it with the actual uh, colour. And the other thing that I normally do is just block in the sky with a straight white or something close to it, you know. Um, as a first layer, because we're going to paint the sky several times. <coughs> and when you're using, when you, you should reserve white for, for the brightest highlights, so it's a good idea actually to mix a little bit of another colour into the white whenever you're using it, so that um, when you come to actually put in a highlight, you've still got white, you've still reserved white for, for the brightest highlight. You know, 
that's now dry and I would normally at this point work the sky in a bit better. You can use lamp black if you haven't got a blue um, the lamp black when tinted with white will actually create quite a bluish colour. You can actually start using a bit of the, the medium that I mixed up before. If you want to thin, thin the paint um, you can add medium. If you want thicker paint you add the powder. We're going to put this sky colour in here. Normally you'd want this to be fairly thick One, one thing that some painters do um, to get the sky to have that shimmery sort of feel, they they actually will, you know, do Regal. certain brush techniques. You can actually go over the horizon line a little bit with the sky colour, mainly because um, I wanted more out of focus feel to the foliage, you, you should paint it when it's still wet. You put a, a little bit of blue in here. Now with the, the roof of the building, uh, which is also quite a blue, according, it's quite a, it's quite a light, but it's also a steely colour, so uh, it's not just um, the ultramarine plus white. It's got some sort of other colour into it, and I'm just trying. I'm just trying to see how how it goes with um, a bit of the raw umber. You use a little bit of lamp black and also the um, raw sienna. The raw sienna will make quite a nice ground colour. It's a strawy sort of colour. Which, which is excellent for fields. If you, um, if you use a raw sienna with a little bit of that lamp black, you can get a greeny sort of colour. So what we have to do there is we have to use um, the raw sienna with a little bit of the blue. Foliage there is, is needs to be a, a bluish kind of tinge, but very soft blue. It's very, very much a, um, an olivey greeny blue, if anything. With, um, tiny little bit of ultramarine and, and you know, and then you can tint it down with white to get the right tone. Actually use a little bit of the raw umber. about the colour scheme of the work itself and, um, and then it's really a matter of uh, going over and over and building up layers and maybe softening and, and darkening and you know depending on on the tonal you know relationships between the objects <laughs> well done 